Hey folks, this is Paul Pata with the Paul Pata Podcast coming to you from Red Chimp Studios. Today we've got a great episode with a really special guest, someone that I've known for many years and have a tremendous amount of respect for. Welcome to the show, Tick Bloom. Tick, you're a Clark County Commissioner, but before that uh, you were a state legislator and before that, and still you are an attorney and a very well-respected attorney, someone that I actually... Um, encountered on the other side in some cases when I was with the federal government. You were representing uh, plaintiffs in employment discrimination cases and I know you fought that battle for many, many years and uh, were really, when people thought of employment law, it was your name and Kathy England with two people that everybody would throw out there. And so I have so much respect for both of you for uh, doing what I think was just amazing work. For surviving all those years. Yeah. <laughs> when people like you were saying, no, no, we aren't going to give you a nickel. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, just doing my job. What could I, I tell you? Okay. You were you were a great lawyer. And well, I'm glad are. to see you've left the dark side and now. I'm 100% on the plaintiff side now. But listen, um, for our viewers who don't know what a Clark County Commissioner does, wh why don't you tell folks uh, what what do you do? Well, it, it's actually a fairly broad uh, scope, but um, there, there are seven commissioners. We each have about two, three hundred thousand people in our districts. Um, and within that district, uh, depending on if there's a city underneath us, we can be the basically the city council, the council person, the mayor. We are the we are the closest elected official to whatever their problem is. So. All right. So now I want to talk about marijuana because a lot of people view you as like the grandfather of marijuana. No, no the godfather. The godfather of the marijuana. <laughs> You're not old. I'd like to be called the godfather. <laughs> okay, godfather. That's right. Godfather of the marijuana industry. You were instrumental in helping to legalize uh, medical marijuana in Las Vegas, and now it's uh, expanded. There's talk about lounges. I think that law has been passed, right? Tell us, why don't you just give us the state of wh where, where is the marijuana industry today in Nevada? Well, um, first off, it's very robust, uh, generating incredible amount of taxes. Everything you buy, about a third of it is, is taxes. So it, it's, it's over $100 million a year, which People don't realize uh, we passed a, a tax on business a few years ago, and that generates not much more than what the marijuana does. So wow. it really is, it generates a lot more than alcohol. So it is pretty phenomenal. But uh, we're we're really ready for the next frontier. Wait, wait a minute, say that again. You, we we get more tax, tax revenue, revenue from marijuana than we do on alcohol. Right. That's amazing. That is, and and uh, actually the only thing I've ever proposed as a county commissioner is a tax on alcohol. Yeah. Because the whole thing was, let's treat marijuana like alcohol. Now my thing is, let's treat alcohol like marijuana. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you go out to the homeless, a large percentage of them truthfully have addiction problems, which alcohol is one of the major ones. So yeah. let's, let's use that money to help with homeless. Yeah. But, but anyway, going back to marijuana, we're next, for the next frontier is going to be what I call the lounges or social use, which could be um, you know, uh, recreational use as far as a gym, um, Pilates, yoga studios, um, health spas, and then it could be a lounge with, with uh, jazz or any kind of music. Um, the legislature in, last year in 2019 actually passed a law at the behest of the hotels that we can't do lounges until at least the summer of, of 2021. So hmm. we're really... Why is that? Um, they said they were worried that we were getting too far ahead of things and they wanted to, to study it. I think, truthfully, they were worried that it was going to catch fire outside the casinos because uh, the casinos can't have marijuana in, in them. And, that, and then it would become so big that they couldn't put the genie back in the bottle. Now, let me ask you a question about that because that's something just as a sort of maybe uninformed average person, why, why can't a casino have a marijuana lounge? Is that just a policy determination that's been made? It, well, it, it's, it's for their own best interest, but because it's still a felony under federal law, a seed of marijuana is a felony under federal yeah, law. That's true. Yeah. So, I mean, because they're so federally regulated and so worried about the feds coming in uh, historically that they just don't want to have marijuana mixed into, the, into that because they figure that's just one more reason the feds come in and they, they don't want that. Mm. But at the end of the day, it's going to be part of the casino business, just like alcohol and other things. I mean, it's just, it's a vice, 
And that's what we do best in Nevada. So it's going to be a, a great part of the casinos. That's what I've always said. So you think what, it's inevitable that one day you will see lounges in the casinos themselves? Yeah, and truthfully, if, if Trump goes, uh, the next Democrat is going to legalize it pretty quick. So I think really within two years from today, it'll be in the casinos and it'll be legally nationally. Yeah. Now it'll be state by state option, and so you still won't. We'll still have a robust industry, but but. Um, now, but, how do you respond to the critics who say, "Oh, marijuana is a gateway drug into other uh, more significant uh, drugs"? Well, if you just look at the facts, it's it's not. I mean, if you look at w when it became illegal, it was done strictly to stigmatize uh, African Americans and and Hispanics back in the 30s. Um, and there's no history of it being a gateway drug. If there's any gateway drug, it's alcohol. But the, what it does do, if it's it, if it's criminalized is that it does get people into the criminal behavior, and then you're having to deal with, with people who are, who are criminals purchasing it from you. So that part is true. But, but if you look at the states, Colorado is the best example because it's been studied so much. There is no more use uh, of other drugs among teenagers or even marijuana than there was when they first legalized it. So. I, I have never, while well, having been in college and seeing some of my roommates imbibe uh, without making any admissions against interest, I've never seen anyone get in a fight over but when they're high on marijuana, maybe fighting over a, a Twinkie or something. But alcohol seems to bring out um, other emotions in people that are much more violent. Truthfully, I mean, alcohol is a much, I mean, I love alcohol and I wouldn't want to get rid of it. But the fact is, there's a huge social problem with yeah. alcohol as far as from driving to, as you said, fights to, to other things. It's just, it's a huge problem. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to realize that and, and, and deal with it. But, but to think, comparing that to, to marijuana, there's no comparison. Of all the drugs, in my opinion, marijuana is the, the least harmful from a societal viewpoint. Yeah. What about the argument that marijuana makes people lazy? You know, if, if people want to slow down and smell their houses, it's fine with me, you know. If you want to listen to music, and uh, what, what, is that a problem? Is that a crime? <laughs> <laughs> and, and if you look around, the people that are involved in it are, are, are very successful entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Most of the major families in, in Nevada and Las Vegas are all involved in the marijuana business, and so they're, yeah. they're not lazy people. Now, that, and that's a, you segue into a really good point. The, f let's talk a little bit about the business of marijuana in Nevada. There was a lot of fanfare when the licenses were being given out. Um, there was this, a lot of talk among locals. People were, you know, going to get into it. There seems to be a perception that kind of you, the people who are really juiced in got these licenses. Um, a lot of the so-called mom and pop ar operators either got pushed out of the marketplace or didn't get licenses. How do you respond to that? Criticism. Well, it was actually intended to be that way as far as the dispensaries. The grows um, were intended to be anyone could have them. There was no limit on that. And if you wanted to do a grow and you could afford it, then that was fine. But we really wanted the dispensaries to be self-sufficient and be capitalized enough that there wouldn't be any incentive to go out the back door or to do anything untoward. And so we, we provided that you had to have a certain amount of money to get a dispensary and then actually the licenses were based upon how much taxes you had paid. So it did favor the wealthy. Yeah. It wasn't my, my goal to do that permanently, but at least to get it up and running, um, we wanted to make sure that we didn't have any problems. But the, 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 the real social equity, in my opinion, is gonna be in the lounges. Mm -hmm. because, and that's why we need to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to participate in that, and then figure out some way to, to actually go beyond just participation and make sure that, that people of color are represented at all levels. Mm -hmm. So that, that's gonna be a, a real challenge for us. But, but that's where they should have less money to get into it and then make sure that there's, there's every group participates and it's all around the valley. Right now, you know, the, the dispensaries are really congregated around the strip because yeah. that's where the money is too. Mm -hmm. And that's also, a lot of people didn't want them in the neighborhoods, which is their choice. Have some of them gone out of business? Um, they have, but not because they didn't make any money. They went out for business for other reasons. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of financial things happened and a lot of, of fights between different partners. And yeah. sometimes when they got in the middle of a lawsuit, they couldn't afford to do it. And so, but, but the, all the licenses are being used. They just are owned by different people. And there is actual litigation right now, I believe, in front yeah. of Judge Gonzalez, challenging the propriety of how some of these licenses are given out. Is that correct? Right. What's that? We, we, initially, we initially, when we did the medical marijuana, we, we said there were about 60 licenses around the state. Uh, and then question two, which made recreational, said that it was going to, for every marijuana license, there would be two uh, just, um, recreational licenses. So that means that it should have doubled. 
Um, and when, but when the state came out with the new licenses, the new 60, uh, half the people that already had them got the new ones and half that didn't get them. And so that pissed everybody off. So then they start, filed a lawsuit. So those parties have been fighting each other for, for over a year now uh, over who's going to be in charge. I, I was just, in court one day in Judge Gonzalez's courtroom, and I saw so many lawyers in that case. I thought, boy, I don't know if that marijuana industry is profitable <laughs> or not, but it's certainly good for the lawyers. So. Exactly. No, it, it's, it's been a huge bonanza for lawyers. Yeah. But um, you know, the license is worth about $10 million, so it's probably worth fighting over. Yeah. Uh, and some of the ways the licenses were issued, one company got eight or something. Uh, it seemed a little crazy, but as far as I can tell, there was no um, nothing illegal. It was just done poorly. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the end of the day, we just need to move on. Uh, I think there's actually a settlement negotiations going on right now, which hopefully can resolve the issue. Yeah. But we, we had such a, a stellar reputation around the country for how great we did that I, I feel bad that, that now we're fighting over each other as opposed to going forward and, and really showing what we can do. And, and the lounges, again, are going to be the key. Vegas is so perfect for this mm -hmm. that... Um, you know, we are going to be the, as I've said for a long time, Amsterdam of the West yeah. on steroids. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not necessarily such a bad thing. No, I mean, that's what we do. Come here, have fun, yeah. brag, go home, brag about it. Yeah. Um, so why not? And it's not as if it hasn't been happening for... And that's the other thing. I, I go around the country and tell people, if you think that all of a sudden you're going to legalize marijuana and it's going to all of a sudden start happening... It's already happening. Yeah. The only difference is now it's going to be legal, it's going to be taxed, it's going to be tested, mm -hmm. and hopefully I uh, get rid of that criminal element. But yeah. but I didn't even have any idea until we passed the law how many people were actually already using it. Yeah. Friends of mine, you know, family <laughs> people, and then the, the husband comes up. You know, my my wife's got some problems. What do you think she should have? And yeah. I'm saying, well, why don't you try this? Why don't you try that? You're like the expert. <laughs> <laughs> well, people it, consult it, you for the best. But it's, it's true that I don't know if it works or not. But but uh -huh. for every ailment, there's a marijuana somewhere that's yeah. ready to fix it. Well, and I, and I, actually, all jokes aside, that is a very important point you made because even Sanjay Gupta, Dr. Sanjay Gupta on CNN was saying that as a doctor, he was very skeptical for many years about marijuana, but the science is almost, you can't debate it, that the, 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 the benef benefits that people have received who've, who've had chronic pain has been just something that's undeniable. Yeah, and neurologically, MS and things like right. that, it, 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 it just works. It's, 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 no yeah. one knows why, but it, it, it's really phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And so again, why not try it? And then let's let's get our university, our medical school, studying it. Uh, yeah. This would be a great place for have a medical center yeah. that where the can people come around the world and, and and try it and see what happens. So now, on a final point, this, the lounges. We talked a little bit about that. You mentioned it, but that's something that's coming, right? It's not here yet. Well, we hope it's coming. The legislature has to can nothing can happen until the legislature meets next year. Hopefully they'll pass a law that allows experimentation and allows the local governments to take control. I'm working with uh, Assemblyman Steve Yeager, who's head of the Judiciary Committee in the Assembly. We're getting ready to do a tour in California to go see some, because okay. California does allow for lounges, yeah. to see how they do it, and, and because it is important. The one thing that's funny is, though, you know, the Paiutes uh, up on Main Street have a dispensary called Nuwu, and they do have a lounge in there. Is that right? Because they're a sovereign nation. Oh, that's right. So, so they can do whatever they want to do. And they said, screw this. <laughs> and I suppose it's very successful. Oh, very interesting. Okay. So. Well, Tick, we're out of time. I want to thank you so much for coming on today's podcast. One thing I really respect about you, Tick, is you are always a voice for the voiceless. Uh, and we're respect, irrespective of people, whether they agree with you or disagree with you, you have very liberal views. But the thing I respect about you the most is you have balls. You always speak the truth as you see it. And that's a rare commodity these days. Thank you so well, much. Well, it's fun to be my age and so you can actually say what you want to say. Yeah, that's true. It's very liberating. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. All right, folks, that's a wrap on another episode of the Paul Pata Podcast. Until next time, stay safe. It's not about... It's not about, it's not about the